So today's subject is back muscles and bones of the back. So we have a diagram here. Uh, and by the way, if you can see it, please write, write it down. Uh, so we have our spine, our rib cage, and our pelvis, as well as scapulas. And this is uh, the bones that the muscles will be attached to so it's important to remember that they are there and to start the drawing when we will start it uh, from these simplified shapes uh, pertaining to the bones now as for the spine itself it can be roughly divided in three parts so we have our cervical vertebrae, uh, uh, the ones pertaining to the neck, and you can see that their shape is um, thinner, that they are flat. Then we have thoracic uh, vertebrae, these guys are 7 in number, these are 12, and they end with the floating ribs. Uh, and then we have uh, lumbar vertebrae, uh, these 5 guys here. Now, amount of the bones is usually not very important, but still uh, we have to keep in mind that um, there are 12 of those, because the uh, ribs uh, have corresponding vertebrae. Uh, we will, uh, of course, draw those like this shape. But of course the seven cervical vertebrae, uh, this guy here, will be needed, because there's a lot going on around it. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, this part, it has thinner muscle than the rest of the spine, uh, so we'll be seeing some of the vertebrae, and uh, it's best to understand how many are there, uh, to avoid drawing approximately, uh, instead of precisely. That's about the bones. So now, for the purpose of the today's stream, we will make simplifications, just like the last time we will uh, make simplified bones uh, and simplified uh, figures uh, as a warm-up. So let's start. So shapes like this. We are starting with a guideline, then we are creating a shape that will be our pelvis, let's make it a little bit lower and make a ribcage simplification, so here it is, so this is our character, it could be for example, this standing like this. We of course don't need the lower part. We just need to create good relational, um, good uh, rotation uh, of the ribcage in relation to the pelvis, because uh, the dynamism of the pose uh, is usually rooted in the in this relation of the rotation of the ribcage. In uh, and the pelvis. So in this one we will make smaller and move here and now we can make more of those because uh, I think it'd be uh, best if we make several for the purposes of the warm-up. This one has the back of it, uh, uh, the rib cage facing us, and then let's add rotation like this, and the iliac crest of the pelvis.
and uh, we can move this glute here to show um, that the pelvis is slightly rotated and the ribcage is facing us directly so this is someone who is doing quite a complicated move But that doesn't really matter. This one is more interesting, by the way. Maybe we'll use uh, this figure when we'll start drawing the actual anatomy of the back. You're probably noticing that some time of the stream is consumed by me drawing. And of course, when we approach the actual muscles, there will be more and more of me drawing. So I really advise to follow along. Uh, the general rule will be that in the beginning of the lecture, things like this, I draw pretty small. So you can put a lot of those uh, on one piece of paper if you're following on paper. Uh, and uh, when I will signal that we're starting the main drawing, uh, this will require its own piece of paper. It will be pretty big. So yeah and more of the warm-ups so uh, you can all already see that the main guideline that I'm using is uh, actually the spine the spine provides us with the guideline For example, this is a person that was sitting and is now standing up. So we have this rotation. Now, uh, this will do for the warm up. Let's return to the muscles while keeping in mind that our main bones are scapula, the spine, ribcage and pelvis. Now let's start. So uh, what we have here is the deep muscles of the spine. So you can see them going from outside towards inside. On the outside we have the iliocostalis muscles. Uh, so they are connected to the iliac crests, uh, which is why they are called the iliocostalis. They are on the outside of these three muscles. And uh, they assist in bending backwards and rotating. Now we have their friends, the longissimus muscle. Here it goes, in the middle. And then we have uh, the erector spinae in the inside, here they are. These muscles are stretched uh, alongside the spine and they are uh, forming this bundle which has this type of section, this type of form, right? It has a face on the outside, a frontal face that's facing towards us and the face on the inside. Then we have the spine and everything continues. One face, second face, third face. Right? Let's um, observe this form on a person. Like for example, uh, this here has it clearest. So we have this shape And uh, we also have this direction, which is, uh, there are two reasons for that. There's a face uh, of a really big muscle here, but also, if you look uh, at the iliacostal muscles, they go like this, forming a little arc. 
So we have this planar structure here. And when we are drawing this part of the back, it's important to keep this form in mind. So the uh, we're artists, and uh, there won't be any sense in me um, discussing any muscle if it wasn't influencing the visible form. But Actually, it turns out the <laughs> almost all muscles influence the form, so we have to uh, study the deep part of the anatomy first. But of course, uh, we'll remember to uh, study the outside as well. So, this is what's going on here. Uh, now, the other part that is on the inside is serratus posterior muscles just like serratus uh, muscles uh, which are here and the system bending these ones are the inner part of the serratus muscle that is usually not seen uh, but it creates uh, uh, more volume here than for example here so we'll remember about them when drawing now, uh, for the next part, let's discuss uh, scapula for a little bit. Let's first see, look at it. So, the scapula has a form like this. It has spina scapula or a spine on it, which looks like this ridge that protrudes of the same form, uh, of the scapula's form, and it divides is, is the form of scapula into parts. Now why is this important? Because we have uh, groups of muscles attached directly to scapula. We'll have uh, muscles below the spine called infraspinal muscle. It will be here. And then we have the muscle above the spine, supraspinal muscle it will be here. This will mean that when scapula is on a figure it will have a ridge and two fleshy bits. So the form of the scapula on the figure is a bit rounded except for the spine, uh, except for the ridge of the scapula. So we will be having uh, this little brick on our back. And returning to the muscle groups. Now on top of this we have this rounded Teres major muscle that can be seen and teres minor muscle. Um, other parts that is attached to the scapula is the back part of the deltoid. Here it is. It goes to the middle of the spine of the scapula. Here it attaches. So uh, these are the shapes that we generally can see. Uh, on the person's back, the deltoid, the teres major forming a bulge, the teres minor, uh, if it's seen, it usually just follows a little bit uh, of bulge above it, and then we have a um, flat infraspinatus that can be covered uh, by the trapezius muscle. Now let's look at a person. So, what are we having here? First of all, we see the scapula and the deltoid is attached to it. We actually uh, see uh, two parts of the deltoid, the middle one, here it is, and the back one. Now, what do we see uh, else? Uh, 
here we have the teres major and here we have the minor and this is the infra um, spinal fascia and the supraspinal here is hidden by the trapezius muscle this big shape here so in terms of polygonal structure this is what we have the back of the deltoid has the lower part the main part and the upper part and of course these now the teres major is mostly has mostly a rounded shape and it looks like this and you see this strip this bit of light uh, this here going under the arm is a huge muscle called latissimus dorsi which we usually exercise when we do deadlifts and other big strong movements latissimus dorsi uh, is at its widest here but it goes down here towards the iliac ridge forming a huge fascia here it goes on top of the deep muscles of the spine that we discussed which is why uh, depending on the person we will see more or less of this bulge of the muscles beneath it if the deep muscles are well developed we'll see a lot of them because this part of the uh, latissimus dorsi is really really thin and you can see shapes beneath it even ribs sometimes now the other part is the trapezius muscle but let's first discuss what lies beneath it so beneath it going towards the scapula we have the uh, rhomboidus muscle which consists of the rhomboidus major and rhomboidus minor which means that this part is a bit thicker this is how it influences the shape so returning to our person here we have the trapezius muscle it's divided into three parts we could uh, roughly call them the ascending part the central part and the descending part this is the structure it will have uh, a face facing down here so a little bit of shade indicates the rotation of the surface then we have its central part and its lower part which has huge volume and because of this it has uh, these sides here it also has inner surface the place uh, uh, the plane uh, facing inwards it's also kind of heart shaped <coughs> now what we uh, have here in terms of the deeper structure is that our deep muscles go here and uh, if uh, this person rotated uh, their arm differently the latissimus dorsi would impact the deeper muscles forming a little bit of fold here that looks like this now we can see the end of the scapula we can also see that this scapula rotated and uh, we see how the back part of the deltoid is formed the middle part of the deltoid and the central part of it or uh, the middle part is here yeah so again there is major there is minor isn't seen here almost and then we have the tricep
and uh, this part where we see the light is the side of the latissimus dorsi that is going down and actually can be seen so uh, this is the main muscle groups of the back and now let's draw a back I will start again by creating a guideline and searching for a good form, for a good uh, general shape. I will also draw a figure that has uh, exaggerated muscles. So we need to create a good movement for our spine. This here is the seventh vertebrae of the neck, the seventh cervical vertebrae, and we can uh, use it to create the neck projection point and to create the simplification of the rib cage here. Now. In terms of the rotation, it's usually good to rotate the neck. This will create a more dynamic movement, so the head will go, will look like that, and will look in that direction. Now we need a guideline that will show the incline of the shoulders. We'll do it like this. This is the sternum. Uh, we don't see it, of course, but we can show it. So that we could understand uh, which ribs uh, are where. And the iliac crest. and the glutes. So we have to redirect the spine at the end a little bit. Although now this will weaken the movement, so let's move the pelvis a little bit. And uh, let's show the humerus, the shoulder bone and the scapula. We can use a curved guideline like this to uh, find the approximate uh, direction of the uh, scapula but it's only approximate because the uh, scapulas can move and they can rotate and of course uh, this means that if our person has different nerves position that, that would mean different scapula positions as well again um, as we discussed on the previous stream the humerus bone is connected between the acromion part of the scapula and the clavicle this is the view from above and the humerus bone goes here between those so we don't see the clavicle from behind of course but we see the humerus bone being attached and this will be enough for now by the way the humerus bone ends roughly at the same height where the ribcage ends so we can use this to find its location and now we can dress this skeleton up a little bit add muscles to it but first I need to find 
and that are fake for the rib cage because we have we have this curved shape here so he is not exactly having a very good posture on our drawing so we'll have more here and more flat line here now that we have our scapula we can attach the deltoid let's show the arm and we're adding with this guideline the latissimus dorsi just to create the outline and to see how how big is the shape of the back when the latissimus dorsi is added this of course depends entirely on how well trained the latissimus dorsi is uh, which is individual but we'll uh, go with the developed shape here of course for the purposes of learning the second delta it goes here and we can show the volume with the line here now you can add the straight muscles of the back they go towards the rib cage and uh, of course they go above it forming this but the latissimus dorsi is also uh, going here creating a fascia here and the muscle part here Now let's show a little bit of iliac crest, it goes like this. And what we have here is the external oblique that goes from the rib cage to the iliac ridge and it creates this form. Now let's show uh, the scapula a little bit more clearly so that we can attach the terrace major the terrace minor and of course we need the trapezius muscle uh, in general it ends uh, on the 12th thoracic vertebrae which means that it ends where the floating ribs end, where the rib cage ends uh, so this is the lower part of our trapezius muscle and now uh, depending on the person trapezius muscle can be wider here or thinner we'll go for a form like this and we'll show the rhomboidus beneath it now what does it all mean in terms of the volume uh, our ribcage is generally like this so if it were to be lighted for example from above uh, its bellow part would be shaded right uh, which means that everything that's beneath the latissimus dorsi 
is similar so it's this part the part that hides from the light so it will be shaded but first we need to make our foam a little bit more pronounced now let's add the tricep and it's two uneven heads By now uh, we discussed the main shapes of the lower part, let's go up the gentle part and the upper part of the trapezius muscle, here it is, and this is the seventh cervical vertebrae. This is all trapezius muscle on top of the neck muscles. Uh, the deeper uh, muscles of the neck that are beneath the trapezius, uh, I'll discuss in a separate video. There's quite a lot. Uh, but for now they just form this cylindrical shape that um, trapezius muscles goes on top of. Let's move this hand a little bit to create a less natural pose to enhance our movement, which is implied by this line. Now what we have here is the glutes, the gluteus majoris uh, and the gluteus minoris. Uh, the minoris goes kind of like here, the majoris goes here, here we have the bone of the thigh, the bone of our leg peeking out slightly. And the form of the glitters can be imagined as uh, a butterfly, like this. So the uh, glitters medium goes here, and it forms this side, and then the glitters uh, majoris comes. Creating a shape like this. Now let's draw a little bit of shading and uh, modify and improve our drawing by creating volume. By the way, we could also show some of the ribs peeking out, especially the sevens and the eights, because they are creating the most bulky part of our rib cage. When uh, dealing with the deltoid, it's important to remember that it has this upper part, the medium part and the lower part, creating a form that looks like a piece of garlic. Let's shade this lower part here and here. Of course, by this uh, point I'm weakening the guidelines and adding volume everywhere. Mm. 
And as always, near the spine, every muscle goes inside like this, forming this sort of structure, like there's a value or, or something. So we're doing it like this. You can show a little bit of volume on the side of the latissimus dorsi, like this. And then the deep muscles of the back go like this. It's also good to uh, create guidelines before uh, hatching or shading and to make sure that these guidelines aren't straight but curved because these muscles go like this in curves. Also their curvature can be enhanced by the posing. Now we will fill in on this part because this is the part that is shaded like here so we're adding a bit of tone now the end of the scapula Let's emphasize it a little bit. Let's show how the bone is peeking through the flesh. Like this. And let's show the volume of the scapula here. As always, I'm using a lot of guidelines, a lot of uh, lines of movement, which usually helps when we want to avoid learning to copy and want to instead analyze the forms to create a way of analyzing the plasticity of the movement, of the dynamism of the form. The plasticity is usually found by using big general curved movements of our guidelines, movements that you can see throughout the drawing here. And all the lower part of the trapezius muscle will have a little bit of additional shading here while retaining its structure that we discussed earlier. You can also use, uh, see that I'm constantly using a blend tool and uh, when I'm doing something like this on paper I, I just use my finger to blend uh, the tone a little bit because these lines are very good for the educational purposes, they are good for showing what's going on but they are not very good when I need to make a drawing so I need to get rid of them 
which I'm doing by using a combination of a razor and blend tool here <coughs> and a combination of uh, different types of a razor and my finger in, the, in real life when I'm drawing traditionally I'm also using a little bit of light on the side to show clearly the thickness of the latissimus dorsi uh, also trying to imply the ribs and the serratus uh, the ribs beneath it now our terrace measure could use some shading let's add some shading there it is and the other one And this part is the plane on the side of the scapula, so let's uh, show it here, like this. Now we have to define the planar structure of the deltoid, like we did uh, on the other side. It's also good to show the upper part of the deltoid as a uh, separate plane for example by showing it as lighted also let's divide the deltoid in the back part and the middle part by using a line here and we're adding the blend tool to make the image less defined in terms of texture in this part so that the viewer will uh, look less at this specific part to redirect the attention of the viewer now let's define the arm And let's make it a little less cartoonish. Now we have these tendons, and uh, the mouse between them looks like this and goes towards elbow. Aside from the elbow, we can see this part sticking out of the lower part of the humerus bone and then the lower arm the forearm I mean adding the line to make it pop out and now we have the upper part not very well drawn but defined so it will be easier to work with it later now let's go down and define the glutes Just here is uh, a separate muscle that engages the fascia of the thigh uh, and it goes here between the gluteus medium and the gluteus major. Now we can add a separate plane here to show the lower part of the gluteus medium enveloping the bone. 
when we are drawing the glute to this major, we can imagine that it has this lower part defined by this curve. It's attached like this. And the butterfly shape on the side. Like this. Now I don't really like this line, so let's find a better line. Adding another guideline here. And the lower part. And let's show the inner part like this with another plane. Let's make this part flat because it's facing away from us. Latissimus dorsi, by the way, ends here. So there's no latissimus dorsi on the upper side, in case I didn't uh, say that earlier. Now what remains is to define the rest of the planar structure and work on the action structure, work on emphasizing the parts that we want the viewer to look at first, and uh, maybe making harder to see the parts that are farther away from the viewer. So we will work on these lines. For example, I'm making the far line thinner and the line on the foreground thicker to create an hierarchical structure of the lines. Of course, guidelines that I use to describe the muscles will have to partially go from this drawing. Also, I do like uh, the sort of aesthetic that we get when uh, we have uh, traces of our guidelines on the finalized drawing. This is uh, the seventh uh, cervical vertebrae. It's usually a bulge. Let's enlarge the drawing. And keep working on it. The back part of the deltoid is separated from the middle part. And this little bit of shade here is uh, the implied humerus bone insertion point. Now 
this is the way you are using a smaller brush on a bigger drawing we can define the terrace minor and the volume of the intraspinal muscle and fascia as well as the volume of the lower part of the scapula Again, we need better, clearer drawing here, so we're adding a new layer of hatching and a new level of detail. But the general logic remains the same. I'm just defining the volumes by dividing them into planes it's sort of like 3d modeling we can now imply and imply the vertebrae especially on the lower part while also getting rid of the traces of the guidelines It's good to have a more pronounced hatching on the line that separates the light from the shadow than in the shadow. So we'll have not only a tonal contrast, but a contrast of texture to non-textured. Which will help emphasize the border between light and shadow even more. And this border is uh, well, it's most important when uh, describing the form. Now what I'm doing is continuing to make the lines on the background thinner. Of course I should have done them thinner from the get-go, but I wanted to 
have uh, more freedom when deciding where the shape goes. So I start thicker and then make the shape more precise as I go. Kind of a way of sketching. Adding some bounce light. The lines here are especially sketchy and thick. Let's make them thinner. Now we are showing the volume of the external oblique, the outer side, the side that is facing us. We are creating the same type of lighting that we used on the latissimus dorsi. The shape here is soft and it goes like kind of like this, so we can use the movement of our hatching to show the movement of the muscle. See, by making this line thinner, we already managed to <laughs> save our drawing <laughs> because now it looks more harmonious. Adding more blending, weakening the details on the back. Adding some vertebrae. The situation is also sketchy and now we have to fix it. Adding an accent point. And emphasizing the iliac ridge, the iliac crest. But of course, we need to have less contrast on the back side, on the far side of the drawing. and more on the forefront.
now I need to increase the shading in the lower part of the ribcage because I already did that but now that we progressed in the drawing we need to increase the shading here Making the connection here softer. And let's show a little bit of bone here where the deltoid connects. The acromion of the scapula. And returning to our process of cleaning the image up and gently making it look better. Now since we defined this, let's draw in this part by adding volume, adding planes that are facing sideways, and shaping the tendon that go from the tricep towards the elbow. Adding some more hatching to define the glutes even better. We can also imagine that the glutes have this frontal face and the face that's looking up, so we'll show it as white as opposed to the gray of the central face. This way we'll be able to show this form.
fetching some more. So about that do we have a little bit more lightning on the left, so we're adding lightning on the left. line better and the same goes for the neck contrast the far side of the drawing by going over with a round white brush we'll of course then return some of the lines so that the silhouette is retained but the shading is weaker which is something that will be pretty good to have to create more depths in the image so this way it's easier to read Of course we do return some of the specifics, but not all of them, because different uh, volumes aren't equally important, so these are less important than this one, the scapula part. finalize by adding the missing planes let's add a little bit of shade here and let's clean up the leg section here to show the volume show how the form flows
Now that we fix the composition of the image, we can finish the drawing. So that's it about the anatomy of the back. Uh, again, I advise you to make a copy and to follow me uh, with this drawing. And uh, it's good to study sculpture, like Michelangelo sculpture and others, uh, and to study good drawings. Uh, Renaissance uh, drawings usually work really well for that to analyze how the form was made, because um, the artists of all times usually do anatomy really, really well, but they were quite good and making form look realistic, so they show a lot of bulges, but just a little bit exaggerated, so we can understand which bulge does what, which bulge is, uh, is caused by what muscle, so it's good to study work of really good artists uh, of the past and uh, to make copies. Now, this will be all for today's stream. If you are watching this on YouTube, please uh, like, subscribe and leave a commentary. Uh, and uh, if you are watching it on Twitch, then thank you for watching. And bye.